Hello everyone and welcome back to another remote sensing lecture video and in this video I want to wrap up our discussion talking about the different types of platforms by delving a little bit deeper into remote piloted vehicles or drones and we sort of touched on these before when we outlined that these are the things that are collecting imagery closest to the Earth's surface, right? These are flying at about somewhere between 100 and 400 feet. And we've defined them in previous videos as basically aircraft that the pilot is not on board. And I want to sort of be clear here that just because the pilot's not on board, right, that doesn't necessarily mean that there isn't somebody controlling it either through a remote control or through a set of, of pre-generated waypoints, but somebody's always observing and making sure that the drone is behaving safely. And what I wanna do is I wanna go through the same sort of setup that we went through before, talking about sort of what it means to collect imagery with the drone, and then sort of the pros and cons of using the drone. And I think the first the first thing I want to do is I want to talk about some of the pros. And I think the first pro that I want to talk about is spatial resolution. And I'm underlining this because this is really the num one one of the number one reasons that you would ever want to use a drone. And if you remember back to our discussion on piloted aircraft, right, we said that piloted aircraft, you could easily pay someone to get you imagery at, say, 30 centimeters or half a foot. Right? With a drone, right, I personally have gathered imagery that was on the order of one centimeter. Right? So you're going down from 30 meters with Landsat down to three meters with planet, down to 30 centimeters with some of the aircraft, manned aircraft, down to one centimeter with a drone. So this is this is this gives you the ability to detect individual organisms, right? Individual small tiny blades of grass even can be detected. Right? But on top of that, not just that, not just this normally low spatial resolution, but you also get flexibility. in spatial resolution. And what I want to do is I want to draw a diagram that explains what I mean when I say flexibility in spatial resolution. Okay. And this applies more generally, but with drones it's 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 really important, right? So we've got the surface of the earth, right? This is earth. Right, and we're going to assume that this is mostly flat for the for the region that we're talking about, right? And we're going to draw our drone here, right? Got our drone. All right, and underneath the drone we have our sensor. Okay, let's just say that this drone is at 400 feet, right? And it's doing something like this. So this is the view of a single pixel. So this is a little bit different. This is the view of a single pixel. This isn't the view of the whole image. This is a view of a single pixel. Right, so this size right here, right, this is gonna be your spatial resolution. Okay, all right, so at 400 feet, right, the single pixel is seeing this much area, and I'm just gonna throw a number out there and say that the spatial resolution of this is, let's just say 10 centimeters. Right, and that means that the side of one pixel would be 10 centimeters, okay? So let's say that we wanted to get better spatial resolution. Let's say we flew, we flew lower. Let's say we flew, let's draw this is a new drone, this is a second drone, right? 
Ooh, it's gonna it need to go quite a bit lower because my drawings are terrible. All right. So let's say we fly a different drone, right? In this drone, we're flying at 100 feet. Right? And I'm gonna do my best to draw this <laughs> the same. If I mess up, I'm sorry. But you can imagine that if we took this cone here and we copy and pasted it and we put it right here, right? Because the camera is the same, right? But because we're lower, because we're flying at a lower altitude, right? This is 100 feet. This is 400 feet, right? Because we flew at a lower altitude, right? Our spatial resolution, this is still the spatial resolution. Right, but because we're flying at a lower altitude, right, the spatial resolution is smaller, say one centimeter. Right, so hopefully that makes sense. When you fly at 400 feet, right, the the pixel sees more ground, so you have a higher spatial resolution. If you took that same drone, you drop the elevation, so you're flying at 100 feet. Right now, the pixel is seeing less ground. Right, the, the area that it's seeing is smaller, so you have a decreased spatial resolution. So hopefully this does two things. One, it shows you the relationship between altitude of the drone and spatial resolution, and that the lower you fly, the higher, the higher your spatial resolution. And also it sort of reinforces the concept of what spatial resolution actually means. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's sort of put that in words, right? The lower you fly, the higher your spatial resolution. Okay. And this is also one of the reasons why drones tend to have no, I shouldn't say tend to. This is why drones almost always have lower, spa higher spatial resolution than aircraft, right? Because they're flying at 400 feet versus, you know, 10,000 feet or 1,000 feet, right? All things being equal, drones are closer to the ground, which means that they're going to have a higher spatial resolution sort of by default. And the nice thing with the drone is that you can control this flight height with a lot more precision and you have a lot more options so you can get imagery at you have much more flexibility over your spatial resolution so that's one of the biggest that's probably the biggest pro right is flexibility and spatial resolution and just in general having really really high spatial resolution let's talk about another pro now i'm going to put an asterisk next to this one because this is really sort of kind of changing a little bit. But as it stands right now, if you wanted to get imagery with a drone, the technology is set up in such a way that you really can do it yourself. The technology is really set up such that you can do it yourself. Right? It's, it's very D-I-Y. Do it yourself. Now, when we talk about cons here in a second, you're going to see it in, over here as well, right? But it's DIY. So what is this, what, why is this a con or a pro, right? It's a pro because you control, right? You control when you get the imagery. Right. Just like the spatial resolution, you control how high you fly. Right, within reason. Right, you can't buzz people's heads and you can't fly in restricted airspace. Right, but you can generally f control, you know, with a fair amount of um, flexibility, how high you fly, which feeds back into the spatial resolution. 
and more importantly, you control when you fly. Now, we talked about this with aircraft, and it's largely the same, but with the DIY version of remote piloted vehicles, right? You're not just talking about paying somebody to get imagery every week, right? I've been in situations where I've actually gone out and I've collected imagery every hour or every day, right? So you have even, whoa, you have even more fine scale control or you have even more fine scale control with drones than you did with uh, aircraft. So let's talk about some cons. Right. And again, DIY. Now, why is it a con for DIY? Right. You have all of these benefits, you have all of this control. But the problem with the DIY is the learning curve. And what I mean by that is, if you wanted to collect imagery, say, next, well, next week would probably be impractical in general. But let's say you were planning an imaging campaign. You needed to get imagery for something. Right? You could call up a company that could fly a piloted aircraft and get you 30 centimeter imagery. Or you could invest in a drone, you could learn how to fly the drone, you could learn how to make the camera integrate to the drone, right? then you could fly the drone and come back and then you'd be responsible for all of the processing, you would have to do all of this legwork and you would have to know what you're doing to be able to get good imagery. And there's a lot of learning that goes into that. And especially if you are not particularly well educated in remote sensing specifically, right, it's easy to make some mistakes along the way that can really damage your data quality versus piloted aircraft. You just pay somebody and, you know, at the end of the day, maybe a month, six months later, whatever, they give you a, a quality product at the end of it. But with Drones, right? If you choose the do-it-yourself route, there's a lot of learning. Two, and I'm going to put an asterisk here too, up front cost. Right. And I'm just going to put some numbers out there, right? You can get a reasonably decent drone with a reasonably decent camera for about $5,000 plus the software to process it, right? And that's the other thing that goes into this. There's also processing, right? You can't just expect the drone to fly and come back down and just give you imagery that you can use, right? You have to process it and that's part of this learning curve. And it's also part of the cost, right? So you can spend $5,000 to get a, a mediocre drone and the software or more recently i've been in trying to invest in, in drones myself for research purposes and i've come out with a cost with a price tag of about twenty five thousand dollars that i would have to spend up front before doing any imagery to be able to get a system that i felt did what i wanted it to do and that includes the software as well again so again you know Imagery from satellites and from manned air missions, right? Those images are mildly expensive, but their costs accrue over time because you're buying more and more and more imagery, right? So if you only needed one image, it might not be that bad. With the remote piloted vehicle, right? You have that upfront cost of having to purchase all of the equipment and then, you know, having to go through how to learning how to fly it and how to process it. So hopefully that makes sense. If any of this was confusing, um, I encourage you to go back, rewatch the parts you're confused about. And as always, please reach out. Thank you.